What's going on guys, 68 Charger here. Welcome back to the page. On this episode, I'm gonna be installing a new Champion Pro Series radiator. I'm also gonna be installing an aluminum shroud with two 10 inch electric fans. Let me know if you have any questions and as always, don't forget to subscribe button. Thanks for watching guys. All right guys, so before we get started, I did wanna point out that I'm gonna be removing a 26 inch aluminum Northern radiator. I uh, started having a lot of overheating issues and finally pinpointed and realized that it was a blown head gasket. Luckily, I did not have any oil in my radiator or water in my oil, uh, which was really good. So I was able to fix that issue. This radiator, however, did have a lot of pressure and so it kind of messed it up. And so I'm gonna be removing this guy. And as you can see, it was kind of hard to modify. So. You can see how I kind of had to move uh, this part of the radiator over to the passenger side a little bit. And then once you see in here, there is a lot of uh, space that I wasted that is not getting any air. So with that said, I decided to go with a 22 inch stock fit radiator. And I did go with the two row, one inch tubing, hopefully that is gonna be enough. It does say that it's rated for up to 600 horsepower, I believe. And uh, this Magnum does do 435, so I think it should be fine. So anyway, guys, let's go ahead and start the unboxing. I went ahead and decided to go with an American Eagle Champion Pro Series two row, one inch two core. This one, like I said, is rated at 600 horsepower, so I should be perfectly fine with my engine. And so, uh, let's go ahead and take this out. This kit did come with the Champion cap, so I can't wait to get this one installed. The next thing to unbox is gonna be the aluminum shroud and the dual 10 inch electric fans. And I did notice that this one did have um, that staple through that box. So I'm gonna go ahead and open it to make sure there's no damage. And then we can open up the rest of the kit. And I don't think that this one received any damage. And this one's good as well. So um, we can go ahead and start the teardown process in my car and then we can start the install process on this guy as well. I just finished removing the radiator, so what I'm gonna do right now is just make sure and clean this really well, go over it with Rust-Oleum rust preventer, and remove that flex fan. And then at that point, I can just start putting everything back on. So now that I removed the bolts for the flex fan, I'm gonna put these shorter ones right here. And uh, that way the pulley can stay in place. I just finished putting in a coat of undercoating on the radiator support. And I'm just gonna let it dry a little bit and then I'm going to do another coat with Tolium semi-gloss rust prevention paint. And then at that point, I'll be able to put in the new radiator in place. Start by putting in the fittings. I just aligned the electric fans on the aluminum shroud. It does say to use these slide-in brackets, but as you can see, they have a pretty big gap in them, and I don't feel comfortable using these because I don't want to put stress on the electric fans and then eventually they'll break. So I'm just gonna use the ones that are already included or part of the fan itself. So I'm gonna start drilling some holes and then I can bolt these on. All right guys, it does say to use a quarter inch, so I'm gonna make these holes just a little bit bigger and then we can start the bolting process. I just finished bolting on the electric fans onto the aluminum shroud. 
So at this point, we just have to mount it onto the radiator. It does call for these self-tapping screws that I'm gonna be using. So I guess I'm gonna start on the outside and then work my way in. So just to be on the safe side, I think I'm going to do one more on either side. That way I can have three on each side. So I just finished putting the radiator together and the support assembly for the radiator is completely dry. So at this point we can start putting the radiator in. I've already put in the guiding bolts at the bottom. And so at this point, I can just slide that new radiator in. All right, it seems like it needs to be grounded down a little bit because it is a little bit off, maybe like an eighth of an inch. All right guys, so it should slide right in now without any issues. And I guess before I tie in, I'm gonna get some uh, washers just to make sure that everything fits properly. New radiator is in. At this point, I am going to lift the car and start installing the hoses and everything at the bottom. And then I'll work my way up to the top. The lower hose is in and I did wanna point out that before I get this question asked, uh, I did flush out the engine and the old radiator before realizing that that radiator was gone and I needed a new one. So the engine has been flushed out. I did that before this install. So there's gonna be no issues with any gunk in the engine right now. The next step is just gonna be putting in the transmission lines. So the last hose that I have to put in is the upper radiator hose. Um, I don't think that this one's gonna fit. It is a new hose that I had on my previous engine and radiator. So I'm going to see if I can make it work. And if not, I'm just gonna have to go to the auto store and buy a new one. So I might be able to make it work if I cut it right here and then somewhere over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and try that. So here is a super failed attempt. Uh, this is the closest that I could get it. But uh, once I actually put it on, it's just uh, stretched out way too much. Um, the way that the hose bent, I wasn't able to salvage it. So I'm going to the auto store and hopefully I can get something that is going to work with this radiator and engine. So after doing a little bit of research, I was pretty sure that an upper radiator hose from a 71 Challenger with a 440 was gonna fit or a big block was gonna fit. And it fits pretty well. So I'm gonna go ahead and clamp it down. And then at that point, uh, I can start putting coolant in the radiator. So the next step is just gonna be putting in the coolant on the radiator. I did wanna mention that my relay kit has not come in yet, so that's the reason why I'm not gonna be installing it today. But uh, I'm going to be making a follow-up video part two where I'm gonna be installing that relay kit. So uh, stay tuned for that video coming up soon. Um, so anyway, let's go ahead and get started and putting some coolant in this radiator.
so it is showing that it's topped off with just uh, two gallons. I almost forgot one of the final steps that I needed to do is just uh, put on this Champion cap over the radiator cap. So I pretty much did everything that I could do at this point. Uh, I've installed the cap on, I put the hoses and everything on and nothing is leaking. I did turn on the car for about 20 minutes just to get it to operating temperature. The uh, thermostat did open so I was able to get some flow through the radiator. What I'm going to do right now is just uh, let it cool down a little bit and once I do that I'm going to open up the cap and then I'm going to try to uh, just top it off in case it needs anything. On my next episode I will be installing that radiator electric fan relay. So stay tuned, let me know if you have any questions, and as always, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, guys. Thanks for watching.